Hello and welcome everyone. We're really excited to have you here today for our weekly OCI Deep Dive. For those of you who might be new to these events, we're hosted on Cloud Customer Connect, which is our Oracle community forum for end users. You'll see links in the chat throughout the presentation today that lead you back to those CCC forums. And if you haven't already, we invite you to create a free account, join in discussions, uh, look for upcoming events on all kinds of topics. My name is Kenna Ketrick. I'm a program manager with the OCI go-to-market team, and we have some returning presenters for our event today. Uh, Srini Vinakota, VP of Product Management for Oracle Digital Assistant, and Joe Huang, Product Management for Oracle Digital Assistant. And today, they're going to show you the latest innovations in natural language processing, or NLP, and how it creates conversational AI for Oracle Digital Assistant, and more. Before I hand things over to those presenters, though, I do want to launch one quick poll. Anyone who's been with us before will recognize this. I ask it every single time because we design these sessions with you in mind. We want to know what you're curious about, what you'd like to know more about so that we can tailor the upcoming sessions to that interest. Speaking of which, we do have an event next week on November 4th. We have Marty Gubar. He's going to be a returning presenter as well, in fact. And he's presenting Every Data Warehouse Becomes a Lake House. So taking you through the transition of your data warehouse into a lake house and how you can use existing skills and tools on OCI to store and analyze all of your data. So I've dropped a link in chat to that event if you're curious and you'd like to join. Uh, we'd love to have you. And our usual reminders for today's session, we encourage you to use that Q&A window at the bottom of your screen for any questions during the presentation. We'll have some folks looking at that. Um, Q&A is always better than chat for content questions. That's where people will be looking. And of course, we are recording today's presentation as usual. So we're going to have that replay and the slides posted up in about 24 hours. So if you'd like to come back and check it out later or you want to pass along to colleagues that were unable to make it, that will be available to you as well. And as I hand things over, I'm going to pop up a second poll because we're really curious about how familiar you are with NLP technology. Um, if you've used it before, if you have a familiarity with it. So if you'd go ahead and answer those, and uh, that is about enough talking from me, I think. So I'm going to go ahead and hand that over to Srini. Go ahead and take it away. Thank you, Kenna. So as you answered that second poll, uh, let me start sharing my screen. And we'll give it a minute or so so that you can complete your poll and then we'll get started. Excellent. So I, I see most of you have actually responded, giving it another 10 seconds. So while we um, wait for the poll to complete, as Kenna said, I'm the uh, VP of Product Management for Oracle Digital Assistant. Um, along with my team, um, we lead the core uh, services for Oracle Digital Assistant, and we work closely with our customers and partners. Um, Joe Huang, uh, who is with me on this uh, webcast, he leads our product strategy, and uh, uh, he works closely with our various uh, uh, partner and application teams. So I think we are um, past the one minute mark. Um, and so I'll, I'll leave the poll on for some more time in case you, uh, uh, you want to address that and those questions, but let's get started. So again, some of the things that you might hear today might be related to future product direction. Um, so uh, make sure you take that into consideration as you make your uh, purchase decisions in the near term. And uh, today's agenda, we will start with a very brief introduction to Oracle Digital Assistant. For those of you who attended our last session, um, you know, that has a, a slightly longer introduction to ODA, what it is, what the various components are. Um, and then after that, we will go into an NLP review, right? Just to um, sort of level set in terms of uh, what the various terms are within NLP, what we wear in ODA, and then why the NLP used in ODA is unique, right? And we will end, depending on the time, we will end with uh, either a couple or, or more demos just to highlight the differentiation for ODA. And I see that from the polls, many of you are beginning to explore NLP at this stage. Some of you understand the basic NLP concepts, a couple of you are uh, working on new techniques yourselves 
uh, in order to uh, uh, in order to essentially uh, sort of uh, move the needle on deep learning based NLP. Um, and I also <laughs> realized that almost half of those who answered didn't realize that uh, ODA has NLP and ML and um, deep learning capabilities. So this is one of the reasons why we are uh, doing the session, just to make sure that you are aware that ODA as a platform has a lot of capabilities and you know, we would like to sort of deep dive into this particular capability today. All right, so with that said, what is Oracle Digital Assistant? It's the industry's first enterprise digital assistant. It's been live since 2017. Um, the name can be a little confusing. It's, um, it's your enterprise assistant, right? So um, that means uh, like Siri or Alexa, this is something that's purpose built for your enterprise, but it's also the name of the underlying cloud platform as well as the local tools that you can use to build skills for this particular assistant, right? It has uh, patented deep learning enterprise language and speech models. We'll get into the language side today, uh, as well as out of the box, pre-trained enterprise skills for horizontal domains and industries, right? We also provide a ton of insights for you to track and understand how it is doing in your enterprise, how the usage is, how the adoption is. And lastly, we also make sure that it is not, you know, you're not deploying one assistant for Teams, one for web, one for your portal and so on. It's the same assistant that you can actually use in multiple uh, channels. Uh, on the right, you actually see um, the assistant for assistant, if you will. Um, this is RT. And um, if you want to try it out, you can go to our doc link that's posted there and start interacting with it. It can actually give you more information about ODA itself. Another uh, quick intro slide on ODA. Um, as I said before, Oracle Digital Assistant has a lot of different uh, capabilities in the platform. Uh, and unlike some of the other platforms that are out there where developers have to cobble together everything, uh, all these come in a single platform. So on the language side, which we'll go into uh, more in depth later on, we have uh, deep learning based intent classification, named entity recognition and so on. Uh, we also have an enterprise grade speech service and a dialogue service and multi-channel messaging, as I mentioned earlier. The various pre-built skills are available through the skill store. And from the integration standpoint, we integrate with our uh, CX service suite, and we allow you to essentially, um, you know, seamlessly transfer from the digital assistant to human agents and vice versa, as well as assist human agents while they are talking to the customers. Uh, and we also have uh, integration capabilities, uh, multi multiple integration capabilities from embedded containers, functions, REST APIs, but also um, we work uh, seamlessly with our uh, integration cloud and process automation products to enable business connectivity there. And uh, as I said, uh, there we have a, a ton of insights and explainability. I'll give you a sneak uh, preview of that um, later today, just to sh showcase how the NLP is actually used inside that area as well. Um, and most of this is only possible because of some of the latest advances in deep learning. And we'll touch on what it means to have, uh, uh, you know, an innovative deep learning stack, a unified deep learning stack, and how enterprises can leverage that by providing the right type of data through our data manufacturing capability. So with that said, let's switch over to NLP review. So what is NLP? NLP is basically natural language processing. And when, you know, and it's been around for a long time, right? So you can, when you think of NLP, when you think of NLP libraries that have been out there for a long time, um, these are some of the tasks that uh, frequently come up. So things like parts of speech tagging, right? So um, given a sentence, identifying what is the noun phrase, what is the verb phrase, um, if there are multiple sort of 
uh, clauses within that, like all these elements, like what is, what is the preposition? There are some 17 or 18 elements that you can identify within a given sentence. By itself, this is not uh, super useful, right? But as you will see a little later, there's, there's, a, there's a reason why this was created and why some of the earlier models uh, were using this. There's also this task of extracting key phrases from within a sentence, uh, being able to say, okay, uh, if you say a particular, uh, in your review, a particular, um, you know, uh, the, the service in this particular retreat was, was great. Um, being able to identify that the service is great is, is one of the key phrases. That's, that's a key part of uh, NLP, right? Uh, when you have a long piece of text. Um, and then you have what we call as text or intent classification. Actually, both these are slightly different, but for the moment, uh, typically what classification means is you take a bunch of utterances and you group them into various classes. And then you, when you get a new utterance, you basically figure out, okay, does this, which, which of these groups does it belong to, right? Um, and you know, most of the initial intent classification where you're trying to figure out what the user's intent is, is based on this type of technology. Uh, we also have entity recognition and resolution, which means, you know, while, Intent classification helps you understand what the user wants to do. Uh, entity recognition allows you to zero in on what, uh, which objects that the user is referring to as part of that action, right? So if I say create expense for lunch at, uh, at uh, you know, Denny's, right? So the idea is within that sentence, create expense is my action and uh, lunch and maybe Denny's could be the entities that I'm uh, working on, right? So that's again, a well-established field. Um, so these are the first sort of um, two are probably sort of pre-built things that most of the times they just work. The second, the third and fourth may be customized often, right? So it might be customized for your enterprise. The fifth one is called clustering, where you're trying to, again, you know, remember grouping of utterances. Um, if you did not already do that, how can you do that you know, using, the, uh, using unsupervised learning or using um, text without any other uh, signals, right? So that's the clustering aspect. And uh, as many of you may be familiar, there is sentiment analysis, uh, and we'll talk a little bit later on how you can use that in the context of ODA using our OCI language service as well. But let's take classification for a moment, right? Uh, as you look at the evolution of text classification, um, initially it was very rule-based and deterministic, right? So developer would sort of code in this logic somewhere in their, uh, in their text processing um, uh, module, uh, or in the chatbot, and you may see something like, okay, if the user utterance contains the keyword job, then just start this particular, uh, you know, then, then start a job application for the user. And it's surprising, but many of the initial uh, bots, <laughs> for that matter, many of the newer uh, sort of simpler bot frameworks that are coming up, they tend to rely on, on stuff like this, right? Like, you know, keywords and, you know, once you encounter a keyword, you need to start something, right? Uh, very rule-based and every time you encounter a new pattern, it needs to be programmed in. The second uh, sort of approach um, that has been an evolution from the rule base is, you know, you take about 10 utterances, but you mark on those 10 utterances, you know, what the nouns and verbs are or maybe you use the parts of speech tagging on top as, as part of the pipeline. But effectively what you do is you take, you, you try to specify what the in, uh, linguistic features are, right? What to look for in a given utterance. And then you actually uh, you know, pick the patterns from that and uh, you, you are able to general, generalize to about hundreds of utterances. Um, it's, it used to work um, to you know, sort of scale the system reasonably well compared to the deterministic um, rule-based systems. But 
again, there was a lot of focus on feature engineering, right? Like, so a lot of focus on, okay, which linguistic aspects should we focus on in the particular sentence? And one of the challenges with this has been, as you switch languages, all these features start to change drastically, right? Like between say English and Chinese, where the structure of the uh, sentence might be very different, where the verb noun formats might be very different, how they are used might be very different. So this, this kind of um, approach doesn't really scale as much. The third approach has been, you know, you provide more data instead of say, you know, uh, 10 utterances, you provide 100 utterances, but you don't actually provide any information uh, with that. And with deep learning, what happens is some of the earlier parts of the deep learning infrastructure or the neural network, it's able to learn what to look for. And then based on that, it's able to learn the various features, right? And a key innovation in this area has been what we call as the word embeddings or embeddings in general, contextual embeddings, uh, which help you understand the semantic sort of meaning of that particular utterance, right? So um, you are able to distinguish between, uh, you know, things like river bank versus bank note, right? And this one, while it takes the you know, hundreds of utterances, it can generalize to thousands of utterances on top. And it's very, very effective. And uh, as you'll see later, there's a, there's a specific mechanism called transfer learning, which really helps in this third category. So that said, uh, what do we do in ODA? Um, we use deep learning based NLP, which is a third category in ODA. Right? And what do we use it for? We use it for first uh, generalizing, as I said, from you know, hundreds of utterances to thousands of utterances from the user. This is specifically in the, in the area of classifying utterances into intents. One of the interesting problems in intent classification is you give the system five groups, let's say five intents, um, you know, let's say uh, create expense, modify expense, um, check status of expense and so on. And then you basically ask it to classify among those five groups. Uh, but what happens if somebody suddenly asks, um, you know, uh, what is the status of my order, right? It is an out of domain question there. And being able to understand which is in domain, which is one of those five things versus the six, which is none of the above, right? <laughs> Understanding none of the above is a very tricky problem and many systems fail to do that effectively. So our deep learning NLP uh, is focused on that as the second sort of big area. And it's part of the intent classification, but I, I, I just want to uh, call that out specifically. Uh, the other area that we use NLP in is learning to pick the right skill. Now, a digital assistant can actually contain multiple skills. It can contain um, your ERP skills, your sales skills, your service skills, uh, IT skills, et cetera. Um, and figuring out, given a single utterance, how to go to a particular skill seamlessly. Uh, if any of you have used Alexa, you, know, you are familiar with having to say, hey, Alexa, do this, right? Or, uh, hey, Alexa, open um, this particular skill to do X, right? Only the skills that Amazon develops, like um, maybe weather skill and things like that, work out of the box. Uh, what we do with ODA is all your skills, they have both an implicit invocation and an explicit invocation. So figuring out how to route to the right skill is a key part of ODA. We also work with multiple languages, and this is again a key capability for NLP. Uh, we are built ground up uh, for multiple languages, and I, you will see how we do that uh, in a short run. Uh, now, we spoke about entity recognition. Um, we allow you to, we, we use uh, deep learning to recognize certain uh, pre-built or system entities, things like person entity, uh, location, currency, number, uh, et cetera, and, uh, and date, time, et cetera, right? And we also, whenever it is confusing, right? Uh, if a certain thing can be a number and currency or a number or a date, 
we actually pick the best entity for you, right? So that you don't have to write additional code to figure that out. We, uh, and, you know, beyond the pre-built ones, we allow you to create your own ML-based custom entities. Uh, we also take, as I said before, uh, things that don't belong in any of the intents that you've created. And we do clustering on that. And we allow, we, you know, sort of group them together so that you can then analyze them to figure out, you know, uh, what new intents perhaps that you need to create. And then in insights, there's a process called retraining. Uh, and as part of that process, we allow you to um, match intents um, and sort of show you what is the closest ones, right? Like uh, given an utterance, what is the closest intent that this might match so that you can quickly map onto that particular uh, utterance. Uh, in data manufacturing, uh, there is something called active learning. I'll, I'll go into this a little more detail later on. Uh, and anyone who has used the conversation designer, yeah, you would see that we do some preliminary intent creation and entity creation from sample dialogues there. There are other areas that um, are related areas, if you will, like speech and document processing, where we use the same uh, sort of underlying NLP substrate to make sure that you are able to get customized uh, ent enterprise speech, for example, right? So if you have a bunch of entities in your skills, they are automatically recognized in your enterprise speech capability. And then on the right side, you see a bunch of things that we are working on for the future in terms of taking your existing chat transcripts and figuring out intents and answers and dialogue patterns from that, as well as figuring out deeper execution plans or dialogue plans using semantic parsing uh, and, and doing more user-specific contextual learning, right? So this is, these are all the things that we do inside ODA um, using deep learning-based NLP. But why is it different, right? I mean, I'm sure you've, you've seen NLP being used in a bunch of different platforms. Why is the NLP in ODA different? So for deep learning, the first stage is effectively the data, right? And uh, if you've been following the news in this area, you've probably heard of BERT and how it is one of the sort of best innovations since, um, you know, uh, the best thing since sliced bread kind of a thing, right? Um, it, it is great, BERT is great. Uh, what it does is it takes, um, it, it is trained on a large, on a large corpus of pre-built data, um, uh, public data, so, so Wikipedia and books and things like that. And it allows you to, you know, if you have a smaller NLP task on top, it allows you to take all that learning that, that has happened in, in this open domain data and use transfer learning to apply it to your specific task, right? Uh, but BERT is focused on words, right? That's, that's the nature of the embeddings and it's, that's how it evolved. Um, and many, many companies basically say, we use BERT, that's why we, we have the best, <laughs> best NLP, right? Um, but there are, uh, the way ODA does it is it combines that word-based embeddings with a different set of embeddings that we create, uh, that we have for sentences and a different set of embeddings that we have for entire conversations. And we have some proprietary embeddings that we, um, we have created for different application domains. And these have all been sort of trained and fine tuned on enterprise data from Oracle, right? So fundamentally, we have sort of done a lot of that heavy lifting of combining all, this, uh, all these embeddings together and um, you know, applying using a, a set of different transfer learning techniques to your domains, right? So data-wise, you get an instant boost because of uh, these embeddings that are trained on enterprise data from Oracle. Now, now that you have that sort of base models, if you will, um, you still need to understand how to leverage them, right? You, there are a bunch of different techniques or deep learning architectures that have come into play over the last few years, transformers, wide and deep networks, et cetera. And again, different companies tend to say, this is the best thing <laughs> that everybody should use. But the reality is there are different needs, different tasks have different needs. And what we do is we 
we use AutoML and uh, what we call as library-based selection to pick the right model for you, right? We, we look at your sort of training need. You say, oh, you are using intent classification. You're doing intent classification. This is your data shape. This is the use case that you're looking at, which is customer service. And this is the vertical, which is maybe utilities. So underneath the platform uses um, you know, uh, AutoML and library selection to figure out what is the right architecture that you should be using to train your models, right? And we do that on um, both CPU and GPU resources transparently for you. And most of the serving, which is the inference, right? So you initially trained and uh, that has taken you, let's say five minutes, 10 minutes to train your models. And at runtime, when a user utterance comes in, um, we make sure that it is able to, that you are able to uh, infer or run the uh, uh, inference on that and figure out what the intent is, what the entities are on that using a very cost-effective and scalable architecture. Right? Um, so that's the sort of foundation, if you will, right? Like a lot of enterprise data that's already baked into the models and then a very flexible, um, low cost infrastructure that is built on top that uh, optimized for your uh, domains, if you will. The third category is what we call as the, uh, you know, the sort of key differentiator. So um, the, the platform themselves, uh, the platform itself is built for deterministic training. So no matter how many times you train, you'll always get the exact same result. And surprisingly, this is not always true for all the deep learning systems, right? and we provide confidence. So we tell you how confident the model is when it does a particular classification. And we also handle class imbalances. Um, put very simply, let's say our pre-built HCM skill comes with um, say, let's say um, uh, 20 intents, right? And they have, they are each trained with, um, let's say hundred utterances, right? Uh, now you want to add uh, three more utterances, but you you have provided only um, ten or fifteen utterances for those three more intents, right? Custom intents that you've added on top. That's a class imbalance. Right? Um, you, you have one class which has a lot of training data, and another intent which has you know let's say just the minimum amount of training data that's needed. Um, so in order to make sure that suddenly all your utterances are not just being sent to the bigger class, uh, we have very sophisticated mechanisms to handle that class imbalance. We are also very scalable. So uh, again, in intent classification, we can do very fine-grained intents, uh, and we can also sort of scale it up to say 10,000 intents within a single digital system. Um, most of the initial approaches to NLP, that you re remember the sort of uh, linguistic and keyword-based approaches, what they really do is they remove stop words. They remove who, what, uh, you know, I, the, like all these small words which are traditionally known as stop words, they are removed from the utterance and then the utterance is processed. So the problem with that is you wouldn't know the difference between as a term like, um, you know, I want to cancel my order versus why was my order canceled, right? If you remove all the stop words in those two sentences, effectively it's order cancel and both would come out as the same, but these are two distinct things that the user is asking. So our model is desensitized to stop words, but we don't remove them, right? We still sort of maintain a bit of their context to understand how to uh, interpret the user utterance. Uh, we also do a lot of, uh, as I said, out of domain detection. And again, if you use, public domain data, inevitably there are some biases that are built into that data, like whether it is value bias, whether it is gender bias. And we've been very cognizant of uh, incorporating bias recognition in our models and how to automatically get rid of that bias using sort of um, processing our uh, data inside our models. Uh, and we also sort of focus on relevant context and make sure keywords don't necessarily trigger false positives. Um, and, and some of these I will show you a little later in the demo as well. And the last point is we use a single model for, uh, for the various languages, especially for multilingual, right? So, so that means that you can have, you can train a model in English and 
when I say zero shot learning, you can take that model and you can start using it with Spanish, right? You might be able to get, let's say, 50% of the utterances work like that. And, you know, you might be able to get the occasional sort of, uh, you know, Spanish user who comes in and asks in Spanish, uh, they, they might be able to get the right responses. Um, and then we have what we call as few shot. So, uh, you know, let's say you have an English model with thousand utterances. You don't need to create a Spanish model with thousand utterances. You don't need to create a French model on top with another thousand utterances. What we do is you take the same English model and you add maybe, uh, you know, let's say 50 more uh, Spanish utterances and maybe 20 more French utterances. And together they form a single model that can operate on three languages, right? And this is a very key differentiator for us uh, in terms of how we do multilingual compared to most of our competition, where you have to essentially manage each language differently. Right? So, and, and the results speak for themselves, right? And again, everybody is evolving. Um, this is a point in time evaluation that we had done about uh, three to four months ago. And, you know, as, as I said, in time classification and entity recognition, we also do uh, language detection initially uh, to figure out if you are using a different language. And key phrase extraction is something, as I said, we do in our insights as well, right? Um, so with that said, let me actually uh, move over to our uh, demo. Um, while I do that, let me see if there are any uh, questions that are pending. Looks like most of them were answered. Hope everyone can see this. All right, let me do a quick refresh. <laughs> And, okay, all right. So um, this, the, the first thing we'll do is sort of uh, understand how our various intents work. There are multiple intents that are, uh, or rather entities work. There are multiple entities that are associated with uh, this sort of generic intent that we have created. And let's say we take an utterance like this, right? Um, which is a long name, if you will, and which is not very uncommon from where I come. And you know, it, it's got four parts, Venkata Sai Sri Kumar, and you're basically trying to figure out which part of the sentence is a person name, right? And you know, uh, you're able to get all four uh, parts of the name accurately. And just for, you know, again, it's a public facing portal that uh, Google has without going into any of their uh, specific products. If we just try this out here, you're able to, of course, I'm not a robot. <laughs> you're able to see that, okay, three parts of the name were recognized. Maybe the first part was skipped, right? Uh, and then if you take something like Spacey, which is an open domain thing, um, and, you know, uh, this is uh, what people tend to gravitate. There is like an open domain or open source model. And because of the data that's, that it's being used to train with, it doesn't recognize any of, the, uh, any of the parts as a name. Now here, if instead I try something like John Matthews, it's able to recognize that as a person. So there is an inherent value bias in this model where it is not able to recognize um, certain international names. So this is what, what happens when you have uh, open domain data and you know, the, the value bias that kicks in with them. Now, let's say you have something like um, a, a confusing utterance potentially, which uh, goes like this, right? Um, when will Devon Arlington come to Stratford upon? Now, Devon by itself is the name of a location. Arlington is the name of a location. And Stratford upon Avon, it can be confused with other things <laughs> while it is actually a location. So, um, so in our case, we are able to recognize that uh, accurately, the person and the location. And again, just for trying this out, you, know, you can see that, okay, location, location, location. It recognized this correctly, but these two, uh, it is not able to recognize as the uh, as a person name. Um, 
One of the advantages of working with enterprise data is we actually get to see, um, especially for our, uh, as, as these are deployed internally for our employee use cases, uh, some very unique patterns of usage, right? So, so this is uh, something that we see in our uh, expenses deployment. So taxi USD 25 uh, for April 19. And, you know, it, it's, a, it's a slightly cryptic way uh, that it's been set up, but, you know, it's able to recognize that the $25 is the USD, April 19th is the date, right? Um, again, if you try something like this, it's not always uh, clear. It will try to tell you that 25, 25th April 2019 is the date, 25 is also a currency, and 25 is also a number, and by the way, 19 is also a number. And this is what I mean by uh, picking the right entity for you, right? So in this case, the developer is actually forced to figure out whether 19 is part of this, is part of this, or um, you know, it's um, 25 is a, is a number or currency. Whereas in our case, we are actually doing that determination for you based on machine learning. And then if you take a different language altogether, by the way, this, um, this model was all trained in English, as you can see. And if you take a different language here, this is German, and it's supposed to be one of the longest names in, in German, apparently. Um, and again, it's, it's able to figure that out based on English training data. Uh, there is no other sort of, uh, we, in, in, the, uh, in the settings for this, we are also saying that this is just uh, an, an English uh, language bot or skill. Right? So it's able to work correctly. And again, I, I won't go through all the different um, uh, different systems, but uh, this is a unique capability that we have. Now let's look at uh, look at machine learning uh, entities. So what you have seen so far are what we call as system entities. Right? So if you were to actually create your own entities and provide um, training data for that, right? So in this case, I've created uh, something called as a merchant uh, entity and I've provided training data, I've annotated it so that, you know, based on these examples, given a particular um, utterance, I want to understand what the, um, uh, what the merchant name is in that particular utterance. So I ask, I picked up Starbucks for this morning's meeting. Can you please expense it? And here it's able to pick up that Starbucks is the merchant. And then, you know, this morning is the actual date um, and uh, the expense, uh, we, we have something called as a, a composite bag and this sort of maps all the elements of that particular composite bag. So that's a very quick preview of how our uh, entities work. So switching on to the intents, uh, let me quickly show you a few of the samples or capabilities that we uh, discussed earlier. Right? So we spoke about um, we spoke about closely related intents, right? So this is a retail example, and again, um, you know, if I have something like I want to cancel my order. It's able to understand that and provide uh, a different um, different response. But if I have something like why was my order canceled, I'm able to again uh, pick up the right distinction there and provide a different response. And again, if you were to apply traditional NLP techniques, the, both these would essentially result in the same thing because they would come down to order cancel as the keywords. Um, some of the other things that we do are, you know, understanding what is the relevant context uh, inside a particular utterance. So if I say that was very helpful, that's a uh, useful, um, I, I, it recognizes it as, you know, appreciation and it responds. But if I say something like, um, you know, uh, that was very helpful. Do you offer a price match? Uh, it's able to recognize that do you offer a price match is the key part of the utterance, right? And um, 
it can actually come up. It doesn't have to come up at the very end. It can come up inside a longer utterance. And what we have seen is, especially when you're using customer service, you tend to have this question, the key nugget of your question somewhere embedded in, in the midst of a longer description, right? So especially as you start your discussion with the assistant or with the live agent, you provide a lot more context. You say, okay, there are some deals on these places. Um, do you price match um, you know, from an online retailer? Because I always worry if I purchase and you know, there are new deals that come up within a couple of days. So you are actually able to understand that this middle part is the key context here, right? And I spoke about zero shot um, capabilities. This particular skill is actually an English only thing. And I'm using German here. Uh, why was my order canceled in Germany, in German? And it's able to pick that up. And if I say something like, um, what was my, or cancel my order, then again, it's able to distinguish that even in German. Right? So that was a very quick preview of what we do in our intents. Um, Lastly, in our uh, insights, this is the other area where we use NLP. And very quickly, um, what we do here is, um, this is uh, one area where you can actually go into you know, the you know, intents that are being used. This is a demo bot, so there, there are only a few intents. But inside that, you can actually see what are all the clusters of uh, phrases that were used. You can also see, um, you know, unresolved, if there were any unresolved um, utterances, you can see the similar sort of uh, clusters of phrases that were used there. And you can right click on that and immediately go to view conversations from there. Right? Um, so again, NLP as a capability is sort of spread across multiple areas inside the product. And we, you know, it, it's, it's kind of, seamless it's like wearing glasses right it's it's ubiquitous so you may not realize that oda has this capability um, but uh, we just wanted to highlight that um, we put in a lot of effort to make sure this is the best in class uh, for you so with that let me switch back to the uh, to the presentation and before i do so yeah, Ashwini, so there's a question I know Barry is trying to answer, but uh, it will be good to also help uh, reinforce uh, one of the key concepts, which is a question from Deepak. How does it understand the context of cancel order, right? The, uh, uh, the example we just used. Right, right, right. So uh, when you say context, there are two types of context, right? So, um, yeah, so cancel can mean many things. And again, uh, it depends on how you set up your intents, right? So you can actually have an intent for cancel order. You can have an intent for, as I said, an FAQ intent or an answer intent for why was my order canceled? Um, and you can um, you know, uh, have a, an FAQ for cancellation policy, if you will, and so on, right? Um, and the, the way you train these intents is how you provide the context for that specific term or specific utterance. And again, it's not used by itself. Um, and it can be, uh, it, it, it's generally treated in the context of the rest of the words that are coming in. And depending on uh, where you are in the conversation. So a lot of it also means how is the conversation structured and how do you capture some of the information in the conversation? So if you want to ca cancel an order, obviously in this case, we are just showing a quick example of uh, how to do that. But uh, typical retailers, what they do is, you know, obviously the first thing is they make sure that it is your order that you're trying to cancel. They do some sort of um, two-factor verification on top of that. And then they give you a confirmation first, or they ask you for a confirmation again. And then based on that, um, they cancel the order. And there are multiple ways you can structure the dialogue to make sure that you are detecting any possible fraud use cases and so on. All right. 
So uh, again, we, we saw a bunch of these things, you know, similar versus unrelated intents. This is where, you know, your keywords um, are, you know, the, the phrases around the keywords are being used um, the same way, but uh, it's able to distinguish between them. Um, it's also able to distinguish between, as I said, close related intents as well as mixing intents and so on. And we spoke about uh, the system entities as well as the custom entities. So um, in terms of uh, native multilingual NLU, again, what you can do, as I said, you can add mostly English utterances, but you can choose to add uh, you know, few of, uh, you know, a second language in order to improve the accuracy of your system for that second language, right? And you can do that both in intents as well as in entities where you may have a different value in, uh, for that entity in, in that second language. Uh, this is the key phrase cloud that I was referring to that we just saw in insights. And there's another area where we use NLP, which is our uh, data manufacturing. So in data manufacturing, you can actually, uh, you know, send a job to you to your internal or external crowd and say, okay, I'm creating this intent. Can you help me um, uh, you know, paraphrase different utterances for this, right? Uh, and you know, again, instead of using templates and things like that, if you try to get actual user utterances, um, your data quality or uh, classification quality improves. Another job that we do in data manufacturing is given a set of utterances, um, let's say from your uh, live chat transcripts, figuring out what is the intent that they may be mapped to, right? And this is the other way of gathering data. Here, you're not actually um, you know, asking the user to create new utterances, you're asking the user to classify existing utterances. And, um, so this is the example for that, where there is an utterance called check if last report got paid. And what we do is we automatically perform active learning and you know, take uh, your existing intent model and try to show what the closest match for that particular, uh, particular utterance is, right? And you as the user, you can decide, no, no, that was, that may be the close from a NLU standpoint, NLP standpoint, but it's actually related to this other intent. So you have a say in how the model is being tweaked. And this kind of active learning really helps improve the quality of your training data. So that was a lot of information, but hopefully you got a sense of how NLP is used inside uh, Oracle Digital Assistant. And again, we welcome more questions. We welcome you to our product page and try out. And you know, there are there's a lot of information on how other customers are using uh, and what the various features are, as well as our documentation page uh, where you can meet RT and you can also see the various tutorials and you know videos on how to structure your NLP utterances, how to create entities, how to create intents, and so on. And um, lastly, we, uh, I just wanted to highlight that we have uh, a regular newsletter that you can subscribe to. The latest version for October is out. So uh, please do subscribe and you can continue to see what are the latest things our customers are doing um, with the ODA capabilities. And in case you haven't started yet with ODA, uh, that we do offer uh, you know, the ability to start on a free trial account uh, with through OCI and um, you know uh, <laughs> get your uh, uh, get your projects going with ODA. So that's at a uh, high level the next generation NLP capabilities of ODA. Um, happy to stay on for any more questions that you have and uh, any comments, etc. Thank you so much, Srini. Um, folks, if you have any other questions, please go ahead and put them in that Q&A box. Um, I know that Joe and Barry have been hard at work answering some questions throughout. Um, so if you have anything else or any other questions you'd like to ask, now's a great time to drop them in there. Um, I'm also gonna launch one final poll. So if you'd take a moment and answer that, just our usual feedback poll, we're always curious about um, how you liked the sessions and what you got out of it. And I don't know that I see any questions coming through. 
but I also see uh, Joe dropping some links in chat. It's very helpful. Thank you, Joe. Sure. Yeah. Any, um, yeah, just in case anyone wants to just subscribe to newsletter now, uh, we have our newsletter editor also on the call today. Um, so yeah, uh, October edition just released. So definitely uh, uh, try to, um, this is the, really the best way to stay on top of um, digital assistant uh, updates. Awesome. Then I'll make sure that all these links go out with the replay as well. So anybody who's sharing the replay out or coming back to take a look should have all these links uh, attached to that too. So, all right. I don't see any other questions coming through. So I think that might be it for today. Uh, thank you so much, Srini, for this presentation. Thank you, Joe and Barry, for uh, doing Q&A and being in the background there answering everyone's questions. Um, thank you so much to our audience for hanging out with us and uh, hope to see you next time. Have a great day, everybody.